At my previous institution, we never used procalcitonin. However, at my current institution, we use procalcitonin in our clinical decision making. Today's episode will focus on procalcitonin. And what do I have in my hand? It's popcorn, because I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And I actually just got a text message from Robbie asking me if the recording is happening right now. Yes, Robbie, it's happening right now. Welcome back, clinical problem solvers. It's Prof Rez. I'm a clinician in Chicago who loves learning and teaching. In these videos, we'll cover various medical topics in less than five minutes, and these videos are just intended for education and entertainment. Today, we're gonna to cover procalcitonin. Before we can understand the utility of procalcitonin, let's discuss what causes an elevation in procalcitonin, and let's dive into its physiology. So under normal circumstances, the only cells in the body that synthesize procalcitonin are the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland. And they don't release it as procalcitonin, it actually gets cleaved into calcitonin and then is released in the blood. Usually this is in response to hypercalcemia. Though interestingly, calcitonin at physiologic levels plays little in calcium homeostasis. But when the body is inflamed, there's certain causes of inflammation that stimulate procalcitonin synthesis and release from many cells of the body. Before we dive into that, what are other markers of inflammation? An elevated white count, an elevated ESR or CRP. Are any of these markers specific for a type of inflammation? No, it just tells you that the body is inflamed. It can be from infection, cancer, or autoimmune process. The procalcitonin is more specific than those three markers in suggesting a bacterial cause of inflammation. You see bacteria, bacteria release specific types of cytokines like IL-6 and TNF-alpha that stimulate the synthesis and release of procalcitonin, while viruses tend not to create that cytokine milieu that results in elevations in procalcitonin. In fact, Interferon gamma, for example, that's elevated in the setting of viral um, infections inhibits uh, TNF-alpha, which stimulates procalcitonin synthesis and release. I just confused myself, but please stick with me. If someone's inflamed and you wanna know is it bacterial or viral, you can use the procalcitonin to help strengthen your argument in one direction or the other. If the procalcitonin level is very high, it's more likely to be from a bacteria. If it's undetectable, it's more likely to be from a virus. But you see there's non-infectious causes of elevations in procalcitonin. These include trauma, burns, intracranial bleed, um, and, and even autoimmune conditions like Kawasaki disease. Though rheumatoid arthritis and lupus are less likely to cause a rise in the procalcitonin level. So you see, procalcitonin is not specific to bacteria. Let's speak about its kinetics. If the levels are very high, then it has a higher predictive value for a bacterial infection. And if the levels are undetectable, then it sort of lessens the likelihood that your inflammatory response is caused from a bacteria. It's usually, um, stimulated, the levels start rising within two to four hours of a bacterial infection. It peaks at around 24 to 48 hours. If the stimulus is gone or you're treating the stimulus, you'll start seeing a downtrend in the level. It has a half-life of about um, one day, a half-life of about one day. If the stimulus is still there or you're not treating the bacterial infection properly, the levels will remain elevated. So there is some utility to seeing what the levels are day to day if you're using it in your clinical decision making. Interestingly, I did a poll on Twitter and as of right now, it's about 50-50 on whether people actually use procalcitonin in their clinical decision making. And as I mentioned, we never checked procalcitonin at my previous institution and I really don't think that impacted the care we provided to patients. So in summary, use procalcitonin as one data point it never replaces your clinical judgment. In any case, please let me know below how you use the procalcitonin level. Do you find it useful? And remember to keep working hard each day to be better tomorrow than you are today. 
By the way, I'm feeling popcorn just come out of my mouth. I hope you enjoyed this.